who do you think's been maybe the greater evangelist for for the gospel and for Christianity, Lewis or Tolkien? I would say C.S. Lewis, um, because he wrote explicit works of apologetics. And indeed, he said that most of his books were evangelistic in the sense that they were written to those outside, those outside the, the church, those outside the Christian community. When you look at the numbers of people who attribute their conversions to reading mere Christianity alone, let alone Lewis's other works, um, I think that's that's a far greater number than any who, who, who say that they attribute their Christian conversion to Tolkien. But that's not to say that Tolkien wasn't effective in his own way, because we have different gifts. And, um, you know, as St. Paul says, some God made evangelists, some preachers, some pastors, some teachers, some administrators, um, and each of us must do what we're called to do. And Tolkien was not called to write explicit works of of Christian apologetics, and, and he knew that about himself. His 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 preferred mode was to to embody his faith in myth and story, and really the only place publicly where Tolkien writes about his faith in in any sort of evangelistic mode is is in his essay on fairy stories, and and even there it's very much about his own beliefs. He's not particularly trying to persuade his readers to share his beliefs. He's just saying, well, this is how I see it. Now, I do know, nonetheless, you know, having just said what I've said, I, I do know some people who who do connect their own Christian faith very specifically to the reading of The Lord of the Rings. Uh, I've got a friend here in Oxford, actually, uh, an Anglican ordinary friend of mine who, who basically found The Lord of the Rings so beautiful um, that he said to himself, Tolkien must be onto something. Tolkien was a Christian. If a Christian can produce something that beautiful, Christianity must itself be beautiful and true and good. Um, and I think that's how Tolkien has his evangelistic effect, much more sort of subliminally and indirectly, that we just feel a Christian sort of worldview, a Christian sensibility coming through the pages of The Lord of the Rings. He's, he's, he somehow manages to communicate a sacramental understanding of reality. Um, his world is lit with light from an invisible lamp, as one of his um, correspondents said. And so people who need to, to, to receive that kind of um, input into their spiritual lives will hopefully get it from Tolkien. And that's what he was there to give them. That's what he was called to give. So he's, you know, he's evangelistic in his own way and in his own in his own proper degree and and kind. Um, so it, as you say, it's a slightly silly question. It's, it's like asking, you know, which, which of which of us is is a better Christian? I mean, <laughs> it, we we we're we're unique. We're peculiar people. The question you don't even ask in the kingdom of God, right? Hey, hey may I sit on your right or your left, Lord? He says, "Get exactly. away from me." You know. Yes. Comparisons are odious. That's right. That's right. But it's still a fun question. But I think your answer is great because you, you, you don't you don't say who's greater. You you follow your gifts. And so, you know, Lewis is talking on the radio, you know, and a lot of those get recorded and turned into books and he's in front of people. But Tolkien's kind of more hidden away doing world building and creating elven languages and and that reaches certain people who are in a very different kind of place. Um or it could just be a simple meal on a table that mom makes that that brings you to the faith. You know, it's so everybody's got to be in the game. And I think if, as long as we're all fully alive in the chest, you know, living out our spiritual gifts, that that God's going to build his his kingdom. Absolutely. You don't have yeah. to be a Lewis or Tolkien, you know. You're putting me in, you're putting me in mind of John Henry Newman and Newman's famous phrase about being a link in a chain, a bond between a bond of connection between persons. Um, and. Each of us has a calling to to connect people to, you know, to 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 connect with other people and to help them to connect with with God and with the church. And we may not be the biggest link in that chain. We may not be the most attractive link. We may not be the most famous link. We may not be the strongest link. The only important thing is that we are not the missing link. <laughs> That's what my aunt used to love to say. We're not the. It doesn't matter what kind of link you are, as long as you're doing some linking. But you mustn't be the missing. 